all the cultures of sports are different. The NBA is very player friendly. I got no problems with it. A soccer. <laughs> I see uh, Ronaldo is going to sign a two hundred million dollar a year deal with Saudi Arabia. Soccer NBA superstars get paid and have huge control. Bounce around all over the place. I got no problem with it. College sports, the coach has more power than the player. I got no problem with it. NFL, the league, the shield has more power. But uh, and I and I think the NBA doesn't want to be like the NFL. But I also think the NFL doesn't want to be like the NBA. And uh, there's a podcast called All Things Covered. Former Steeler Brian McFadden was on it with uh, Patrick Peterson, a former teammate of Kyler Murray of the Arizona Cardinals. That thing is kind of imploding. And uh, Patrick Peterson, with some uh, kind of honesty that pro athletes rarely throw shade at guys they know, here it is. Vocally, Kyler Murray is talking about, and, and I don't like how he's doing that. I think he should keep some things privately. But it tells me he doesn't care about the head coach, his head coach. And he's putting everything on the head coach, basically saying Kyler Murray don't care about nobody but Kyler Murray. <laughs> That's just a matter of the fact. So as the NFL has grown, the revenues have exploded. Uh, star quarterback salaries, the most important player, are now, I mean, like Messi, Ronaldo-ish. Guys signing four or $500 million contracts. They're only going to grow. And I'm here for it. But it is starting to feel a little bit like the NBA, where guys get these huge deals, they either don't work out, they're past their prime, they get hurt, and the team is trapped. That's what the NFL's always done a really good job of. They don't get trapped. I mean, the last 10 years, you you can't name bad contracts. Baseball's got dozens. NBA's got two dozen. But Arizona's a little trapped. Now, trading for Russell Wilson, because Denver feels trapped, and they are. But trading for Russell Wilson was the right idea. Giving him a massive extension before you'd seen him play a game probably wasn't. But where Denver's really screwed is Russell Wilson's out of his prime, and they gave up all sorts of draft capital to get him. It's different in Arizona. Kyler's in his prime, and they got all sorts of draft picks. Um, the only way for Denver to really ease the pain, because these are the two situations where you're like, oh my God, these are like NBA contracts. The only way for Denver to ease the pain is to go out and find the best young head coach you can find, probably offensive, and save this thing. Because you don't have the draft capital to hit on four or five or six picks like the Seahawks did, where literally five picks are all good, turns you around in an hour. So they've got to push control, alt, delete uh, on their computer, reboot, go get a new coach, new system, new ideas, new play catalog. I think you, in Arizona, I think you can fire the coach. Their big issue is in draft capital or even his athletic ability because Kyder can really ball. The problem is he's just difficult. Russell Wilson may be a tad cringy, He's not difficult. He may be a tad delusional, overly optimistic. He's not difficult. Kyler Murray's just hard to coach. Ian Rappaport, very trustable guy, uh, said here recently, the coach could be irrelevant. I think it's always tense with Kyler. Like, I don't think, with Cliff's always very, like, he works hard, but it's very chill. With Kyler, it's always tense. So, like, I know we all, I mean, including me, like, I did a thing on this this weekend. We're all kind of focused on that relationship. I would imagine... It's going to be tense with any coach and Kyler because he wants what he wants. He sees what he sees. He's very demonstrative about it. And he's kind of curt a little bit, like quick and like, come on, like it's, he's very blunt. He's very blunt. So you have these two situations where the NFL is starting to feel a little NBA. And by the way, the NFL has borrowed things I like from the NBA. A celebrations after touchdowns, much better on social media than three or four years ago. They've lightened up. Um, they've moved in the right direction, player empowerment, but you don't want to become the NBA in baseball where teams get trapped because in the NFL, it's still a salary cap league, bad contract, bad team off television. You go to the corner TV game. You do not, you do not want to be the Texans. And it's amazing how fast it goes South. Belichick now doesn't have the right quarterback (laughs) spent $300 million on free agency. None of the guys popped. Judon's okay, but like really none of them popped. 
kind of irrelevant. That's Bill Belichick. So I think I think Arizona at least they both got their issues. Um, I at one point about a month ago, two months ago, said should Denver and Arizona swap quarterbacks? Arizona just wants somebody that's a grown up and coachable. Denver's like we got no picks. We need a playmaker because we can't fix the O line in one draft. We just can't do it. We don't have the picks. Greg Cosell is joining us. Greg, if you were a, a crypto bro, I feel terrible. I apologize for that rant. I feel terrible. Uh, no, I was not. You don't. You don't need to feel terrible. <laughs> No, no, there's no chance of that. Yes, the same here. Yeah. I'm not 24 years old, unfortunately, uh, anymore, Colin. So, you know, I, I like to think I use my brain once in a while. Yeah, same here. Let me let me, uh, let me throw something out there that I, I made. I had a revelation last Sunday. And I said I didn't think benching Zach Wilson was, was the smart thing to do. And then by about the middle of the third quarter, right. I said, wait. Mike White is better currently as an NFL quarterback than Zach Wilson. I'm wrong. He's better. Am I nuts? What does the film say? I would say, again, Mike White obviously has played one game, so I don't think it's fair to make a definitive judgment about Mike White. He played a few games last year as well, had a good one and then some bad ones. So let's leave Mike White out of the equation for the moment. Okay. Zach Wilson at this point is a little bit broken, Colin. Yeah. He needs to be taught from the ground up. You need to start with Zach Wilson as if he's almost never played quarterback. Wow. You need to start with everything, taking the snap, footwork, dropping into the pocket, setting. His mechanics are really, really poor. Um, this is before you even get into anything involving your offense and where you want him to throw the football. This is before you even get into anything involving looking at defense and seeing and, and explaining to him NFL defense, he's a little bit broken, and you need to start from scratch. Um, now, my personal opinion, others might not share it, is I think you need to bring in an NFL quarterback coach with a lengthy, meaningful resume. Uh, you know, And again, they have a quarterback coach who's young. He may end up being a phenomenal coach. I'm not knocking him at all. But I think at this point in time, you need to bring in someone who's done it before and has a strong resume as an NFL quarterback teacher. So I want to move um, to an established quarterback, and what you do is watch film. Yep. So in the history of the NFL generally, this has not been something we have seen. Not only it's, – it's not just irregular. I've never seen it. Where like a 33-year-old quarterback goes from 100 passer rating four years in a row to terrible. <laughs> without an injury. Now, Peyton Manning at 38-39 aged very quickly, but he had had four neck surgeries. He was late 30s. Right. So when I watch Russell Wilson and I am told he's washed, I'm like, well, what's the precedent for being really capable to awful? There's not a lot of it. No. Um, so when you watch film, is Russell, is it the system? Is it like, can explain the Denver mess to me? Because I'm over-defending a guy who was, a year ago, more than capable. Yeah, I think Russell Wilson, and again, these are hard questions because we're not in the building. We weren't in the building in Seattle. But I think what the tape tells you, and even if you go back to Seattle, Russell Wilson made a lot of his bones late in games where he was extremely dangerous and no one wanted to play against him when he had the movement ability and the ability to make throws and runs off second reaction movement. If you think back to Seattle, and I know you'll remember all this, there were three, four, five games every season in which the Seahawks had 130 yards of total offense <laughs> in the middle of the fourth quarter, and they had a really good defense, and the score was 13-10, and he'd make those two or three absolutely special plays that were Russell Wilson plays, yeah. and they'd win the game. But up until that point, they had very little offense. I'm sure you remember all Sure, that. sure. And the knock was Pete was too run-centric. 
Right, and that was always the thought that, hey, Pete is not letting Russell be Russell. Now, there was a stretch, and I think Brian Schottenheimer was the coordinator at the time, where I forget what season it was, where they let Russell toss it around through the first five or six or seven games, and the numbers were really, really good. And then, as I recall, he might have thrown a couple of picks, and Pete said, that's enough. Right. Uh, and they went back to running the football. Um, this year, when you watch the tape of Wilson, I think he's, this is what, to me, the tape shows. That's okay. all I'm speaking about. Because sure. you, you know how it goes with social media. People say you're, you're an idiot. I'm telling you what the tape shows. Yeah. The tape shows, in my view, that he's not seeing things at the speed which is necessary to see it in order to execute with timing and rhythm. Now, whether that's a function of being in a new offense, whatever the reason is, I can't tell you the reason. I can only tell you that that's not happening. And he, so... And because he's clearly not confident in what he's seeing, what that often leads to is less precise ball location because you're just not feeling comfortable in the pocket delivering the football. Yeah. Also, you're not seeing the second reaction movement as much as you have in the past. So you're not seeing plays in which he's not comfortable become positive plays the way they used to be because he would then leave the pocket and make something happen. So again, I can't tell you why that's the case, but that's clearly the case. Uh, is it a function of a new offense? Perhaps. Um, is it a function of maybe he's just getting older and he's not as good? Maybe that's the case as well. We don't know, but that's what the tape tells me. Yeah. No, it's interesting. Um, you know, it's funny. It, it, I, 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 in my life, in my career, I've said be very, very careful about seeking power uh, sometimes we can be our own worst enemy. And so good, strong management or good, strong bosses in my career have been very, very valuable. Right. I, I don't want too much power. Um, so Tom Brady goes to Tampa, and he has a lot of power. And then he wins a Super Bowl with more power. And then he kind of moves off Arians. He got even more power. And now he looks broken, and the offense is a disaster. And I, I what does the film say right now defensive coach Todd Bowles, who now is like calling out his leaders in the locker room. Right. Brady, the offense. You tell me. It was was Arian just more valuable than anybody wants to acknowledge? Maybe. Uh, we don't, again, something we don't know. But, you know, I saw Brady do something this week. There was a third down play. I believe it was either late in the game or in overtime. And I have to tell you, I don't recall ever seeing Brady do this. He dropped back. And there was no pressure on him whatsoever. And he drifted off the midline to his left right into pressure and therefore could not step into his throw and threw a ball right in the ground to Mike Evans, who was wide open right at the sticks on third and 14. And I said to myself, wow, I don't ever recall see seeing Brady move off the midline when there was no pressure and, and create his own pressure. So again, that's just one play, but I, I almost had to watch it 10 times thinking, God, this guy never does anything like that. Everything is so precise and so perfect from a mechanical standpoint. And here in a critical situation late in a very winnable game that he did that. So, you know, he, to me, He's not a comfortable player right now. I think that he's playing a little fast at times, and, and not all the time. I mean, he's still making some really good throws, obviously, but he's playing a little fast at times. And I, I feel, too, that, look, Mike Evans has not been a big factor over the last number of weeks. It's kind of weird that Chris Godwin has more targets than Mike Evans, and he missed time at the beginning of the season. Yeah. So I saw something last week, <clears throat> you know, before every season. In fact, you do it in like the spring. You give me quarterbacks in college and yep. wide receivers in college to look at. So I get kind of a jump on people. And so I'll, I'll go into a, a, a final year of a player's eligibility in college and I'll, you know, I'll watch him. And um, so I, I've, I've um, there's two quarterbacks over the last 10 years that I thought were guys that could win on average teams. Andrew Luck. I thought could win in an average team. He did. 11-5, 11-5, 11-5. Right. With a bad roster. And I, I, I didn't think he was as good as Luck, but I thought Trevor Lawrence had some of those traits. Yes. Now, you're not as high on Trevor Lawrence, but I watched a drive, two of them, against Baltimore. Yeah. And, Greg, I was like, you know, the light has to go on for all these young guys. Sure. He, he, he looked very good. Now, 
Was it the defense? Was it the opponent? Or did you see something that leads you to believe that, okay, he's he's moved past a certain threshold. He's now, he's, he's you know, these guys all say, Mahomes said it after like year two. The light came on. Right. Um, here's what I saw on tape, and I noticed it after three or four dropbacks. What stood out immediately to me was how quick Lawrence was. And don't forget, he's a tall, long-legged guy. Yeah. And sometimes those guys are not quick with their drop and set because they just don't have the body type for it. You know, they're long-legged. But what stood out immediately to me, and I noticed this early in the season, and then it kind of stopped. But the last couple of weeks, it's come back, and I noticed it specifically this week. He was so much more compact and quick in his drop and set and delivery. Delivery. And when you're back there, you know, I've heard Mike Martz talk about this for years and years. You have got to get back in the pocket. The guys who are lazy droppers, everything slows down for them, Colin. Yeah. You have got to get back in the pocket and be ready to deliver the football. Because you know what that allows you to do? It allows you to see things quicker and cleaner, therefore be more decisive in your reads and throws. And I noticed that immediately this week about Trevor Lawrence. And if you notice, the ball was coming out. He was never getting stuck in the pocket. The ball was coming out with timing and within the structure of the route concepts, and he played exceptionally well. That's exciting. That's exciting. You know, you, you've talked about that before, is that, that that's why it's, I think it's so important for young quarterbacks. Now, Matt Eberflus appears to be a good coach, but I do think defensive and offensive coaches see the world differently. Without question. And I think it's really valuable to give Trevor Lawrence Doug Peterson. Um, I, I This is not a knock on Brandon Staley, but he's a defensive guy. And I think there's times with Justin Herbert, I've, I, I've thought, okay, I know he's talented, but I don't think they're putting enough on – they're not challenging him enough. Now, some of that's their injuries – you know, Mike, right. Mike Williams is never healthy. Keenan's her O line is a mess. But I, I think Doug Peterson deserves some credit here. Okay, without without question, without question. I mean, look, Doug is 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 a proven offensive coach and a very good one, and he understands the offensive game. Look, I, I, Dick Vermeil used to come in and watch tape with us uh, for years, and one thing he said that has always stuck with me, Colin. He said, when you draft a quarterback high, okay, he said. The whole purpose of your entire building, the secretaries, the janitors, everybody in the building should be to make that guy an all-pro. That should be the whole purpose of your organization, because if that guy doesn't make it, then you don't make it as a team. So the whole purpose of the organization, and I'm saying this because it goes to the coaching as well, obviously, is to make that guy a great player. Yeah. That's, that's, that, that is a great way to look at it, because we all win – we retain our jobs because in this league, what really ruins organizations is, oops, we messed up at quarterback. Especially if the guy's a first, second, third pick in the draft. It's one thing if you know he's a third-round pick, then you go, he's a third-round pick. But if it's the first, second, third, even a top 10 or 12 pick in the draft, if it's a quarterback, that guy has to become an all-pro. Uh, finally, so um, Aaron's had Rodgers a broken thumb all year, banged up thumb. Um, and we all watched Jordan Love, and we were all like, oh, that's pretty good. Um, you keep Aaron Rodgers if there's no decline, I would imagine. But he, I do believe that, you know, Favre was a little bit, um, you know, I, I don't know if I've ever told you this, Greg. I've always had a theory on Green Bay quarterbacks is because there's no owner, and it's, it's a town. It's not even a city. Is that the quarterback is uniquely powerful. Favre, right. really, there's nobody to answer to. And that, that, over the course of time, if I didn't have a boss for 15 years, you start believing you have all the answers from vaccines to football. I got all of them. Correct. And I think, Aaron, people have to walk on eggshells. It's the Green Bay quarterback syndrome. And I saw it with Favre. He got very stubborn. And I see it with Aaron. I think they want to watch Jordan Love for four to five weeks. And if he looks capable... I think they would I think in one second they'd go get a first and a second round pick for Aaron. You tell me when you look at Aaron it's still beautiful. Um but it, when you watch him do you see a guy with 4 years left? 3. Do you think Aaron's still right in that prime wheelhouse? Cuz if he is that becomes a much harder sure. move to make. 
Well, it's a tough evaluation because there's no question that he's not thrown the ball as well this year, and, and he has a thumb injury that some doctors I've read believe are, it's amazing that he can even throw a football. So he has missed some throws this year that we never see him miss. Um, if that's due to injury, then it becomes an extremely hard evaluation, Colin. But at some point, you know, look, they drafted Jordan Love in the first round. Now, that's a decision they made. When they made that decision, I would have to believe they made it based on the fact that Jordan Love would play and be their starting quarterback at some point in time. Right. You know, we're getting past that point. It's He's in his third year, I believe, correct? Yes. Is, is Jordan Love? Yes. Now, anybody who says they know what Jordan Love is or isn't is, is just making statements because he's certainly not played enough for us to have any real sense of what he is. They, as an organization, have a sense of that because they're with him every single day. But still, he has to play in games. And you can't just look at, let's say, last week and say, wow, he could be good. Or look at last year when he started against the Chiefs when some people said, oh, he can't play. That, that, those are unfair statements that are based purely on speculation. But they clearly believe they have something in Jordan Love. But if Aaron Rodgers can still play at a high level, that high level's pretty good. <laughs> you know, he may be the greatest thrower we've ever seen. So, you know, it's a, uh, look, I, I don't get paid enough to make that decision for them, but that's a really, really tough call. But there's no question Rodgers has not been Rodgers this year uh, every week, and I'm sure the injury has been a factor. Greg Cosell, 43 years NFL films. We're radio only today. I enjoyed this. A little storytelling time. Great seeing you, hearing from you as always, Greg. Colin, I really appreciate it. Thanks. You bet.